welcome to The Diplomat with Stephen Taylor. Thank you for joining us. Uh, joined by a lovely lady who I know very well from her time here in Cape Town, Bonnie Hobach. Now I must call you ambassador uh, in Lithuania for the Netherlands. Uh, ambassador, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for inviting me and thank you, you know, that you still thought of me because uh, I still miss Cape Town and South Africa almost on a daily basis. Yeah, it's a beautiful place, but uh, so wow, uh, you were, for those that don't know, you were the Consul General of the Netherlands here in, in Cape Town, but let's go back before that to the younger Bonnie. Uh, where, where were you born, Bonnie? I was born in the Netherlands on the on the southeast side of the Netherlands, very close to Germany. We actually, when I was younger, we actually only uh, used to watch German uh, programs on television because oh, the Dutch really? didn't have. <laughs> so <laughs> in, in those days, I, my, my German was actually better than my, 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 my Dutch. Uh, oh, so wow. I was br brought up in a, in a very small village uh, with uh, two sisters and a brother and, uh, and my mother. So uh, happy. Happy uh, childhood, if I think back, um, very protected, um, and uh, yeah, it was a good time in uh, in those days. So the, you, you went to school, obviously, in the Netherlands. Tell us about that. Uh, tell us about growing up, the schools that you went to. Um, well, I, I think from a very young age, I knew that I wanted to leave that, that village. I thought it was a little bit cramped. Uh, I thought it was a little bit, a little bit small. Uh, so I think uh, already when I was 11, 12 years old, I told my, uh, my mother, I want to go and study in Amsterdam. I actually oh, had wow. three, three dreams. I wanted to study in Amsterdam, I wanted to have a tattoo, and I wanted to, to have my motorcycle license. Uh, oh, wow. I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've realized too, um, uh, uh, and probably later on you will know which which is the second one. So I, I went and studied in the Netherlands after of, uh, in Amsterdam afterwards. I studied law and history, um, and then um, uh, I, it was a, I think my, my studies were quite um, uh, quite nice because I, I specialized on in history on African American history, and in law on. Um, as uh, non uh, as, uh, resolution of uh, conflicts outside the courts. Um, oh, no. And I combined those two studies uh, in a post academic degree in New York on racial discrimination and civil disobedience. Um, so, so I took a, a very strange route because then afterwards, uh, after um, New York, I decided that I had to go back into history a step more. I thought, you know, I need to go, I need to go and, and explore Africa because African American history, um, yeah. and especially African, uh, be you know, dealing with this topic in uh, in, in the United States, um, uh, ignited my interest in the African continent. So. After my studies in New York, I went to Ghana, where I did um, a an, an, uh, an volunteer job for, for one year in the northwest uh, uh, of Ghana. And for that job, I needed my, a motorcycle license because I had a ah, motorbike. So you never got the tattoo. <laughs> I never got the tattoo. <laughs> I, uh, but uh, funny enough, it, 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 I'll get to the tattoo later, I think. Um, yeah. uh, but so I, I had a, I, I had a, um, a, a, a small project or a project where I visited uh, uh, 65 women's groups in the in northwest of Ghana. Um, and I talked to these groups on uh, income generating projects and uh, how you can have income generating projects without um uh, destroying the environment the climate especially you know the the cutting of trees it was an amazing time i learned a lot i also um uh, that's where my love for the african continent started um uh, and it never left me uh, and some people say you know either you love it or you hate it and i love it uh, i love africa in all its um with all its aspects, but especially the people, I think. Uh, so uh, I went to Africa uh, afterwards. Then I ended up uh, going uh, with my then uh, partner to uh, Mali, to Bamako. Wow. Um, 
And from Bamako, uh, where I didn't do much, and that was also my frustration, I said to my partner then, I said, well, if I stay here, then I become a housewife. And I didn't study to become a housewife. So I want, <laughs> yeah. I want to uh, start my career. So I went back to the Netherlands and I uh, found a job in Brussels, where I became uh, the general manager of a lobbyist um, in um, a public affairs office for uh, five Dutch industrial companies. Uh, and I did that for uh, three years. Um, uh, and then I was asked by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to, um, uh, to come and join uh, the diplomatic service. Uh, and I ended up going to um, Bangkok, where I did not Thailand, but I did uh, um, Cambodia, Laos and Burma. And at that time, Burma was still closed. Um, uh, so you could not travel there. Um, uh, diplomats could. Um, so I, I saw Burma uh, without any tourism, uh, very um, uh, still, you know, um, uh, almost locked into time. Uh, it was amazing. I think Cambodia was also one of my favorite countries to travel to. Very assertive people um, willing to work hard to make something out of their life. So it was, uh, it, was, it, was it was very special time. Um, but I was most intrigued by post-conflict uh, uh, countries. Uh, so when um, a position opened up in Baghdad in 2004, um, I applied for that one. And so that was just after they had kicked out uh, Saddam Hussein. He was not caught oh, yeah. yet, but yeah. yeah. Um, so I went to uh, Baghdad and I stayed there in 2004-2005. Um, uh, and it, that was also an amazing time because you're, you're part of history uh, yeah. in the making and every yeah. CNN opening opened with Baghdad and that's where, yeah. where I was. Uh, wow. So I, yeah, it was really, it was an amazing time. Um, uh, if I look back, it's now, uh, you know, more than 10, 50, almost 15 yeah. years ago that uh, the whole clip, the conflict started. I sometimes look back with uh, with a lot of pain. I think it's the only co country I look back to where I think um, something that went horribly wrong there. It never yes. it became yes. the dream or never realized the dreams and the hopes that we had for the for that country. Actually, in many ways, it's only got worse. Um, yeah. So um, I sometimes. So you were uh, there. We obviously saw what we saw on the news. Baghdad, yeah. is it like that in real life? Or is, it, or is there towns that are nice? Is there places that you can live? Uh, how was it like for you there? Um, well, Baghdad itself was quite dangerous. Um, we were living in the, in the embassy, so you didn't have your own house. We, you were all okay. living together in the embassy. And oh, wow. uh, 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 at the time when we were there, the embassy also got attacked. And so we had oh. to move from the the red zone into the green zone. That was a, a zone protected by uh, the Americans where a lot of embassies were based. And so we moved uh, into the, the green zone. Uh, I, th I think still e there is this green zone, which is more protected uh, where the parliament, the, the Iraqi parliament is based. Lots of the ministries are based. Um, so at that time it was already getting uh, worse. It was uh, getting uh, dangerous. Also yeah. traveling from the green zone to the to the airport was quite um, uh, a challenge. Um, uh, but we, uh, during my time there, I also traveled to, to Kurdistan, and uh, there it was much more relaxed. And uh, we met a lot of people, and it was amazing to to travel in Kurdistan because a lot of the Kurds who had fled during the times of uh, Saddam Hussein to the Netherlands had come back. Uh, so actually we could talk, speak Dutch to, to, to quite a few people oh, in wow. Kurdistan. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> uh, because they had stayed in the Netherlands for so long and were now trying to set up their own uh, uh, companies, uh, uh, you know, introduce new methodologies uh, with regards to agriculture, you know, all the things they learned in the Netherlands they were taking yes. back. And then I think it, uh, for me, it was a very positive way of, of looking at refugees, we often yeah. look at refugees as 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 uh, as a burden to the countries yeah. where they um, uh, they, they yeah. find refuge. But I think if you uh, at that time it was very positive to see that a lot of the the Kurdish refugees 
had gone back and were setting up a rebuilding their, their, their part of uh, Iraq. And that was, I think, was a very positive uh, experience for me. We also visited the Yazidis. Um, it's a special cult, uh, a special religion, um, uh, very humble, uh, open and inviting people. Um, and I think uh, a few years ago, everybody can still remember those, uh, those pictures that the Yazidis were driven onto this um, uh, hill by the ISIS. Uh, yeah. And lots of the yeah uh, of the Yazidi women were actually enslaved and and uh, uh, abused, um, uh, and that broke my heart because we yeah. visited them and they were very open and very uh, willing to to share their uh, um, their their drink and their food with us and and oh, wow. then something so horrible uh, happened to them. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, each country has a different. Um, a, a different space in my heart, uh, I think, yeah. and uh, yeah. uh, it's often the people that make uh, um, uh, a position very special. And I think, uh, um, I think that's what what I also um, why South Africa has become so special because it's the people in South Africa that I, I that I really like. But it's also an experience that I shared with my daughter uh, because oh, when I good. yeah when I. Um, uh, uh, when I uh, left Iraq, I went back to the Netherlands, back to the ministry. Um, uh, I actually left the ministry to do a job in, um, in the private, uh, in the business, as a wow. public affairs director for a big Saudi company in um, uh, uh, polymers, uh, plastic. Uh, okay. And uh, after a year or so, I was asked back by the ministry to become the spokesperson to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Um, oh. So, so I have like a very strange uh, yeah, career. No. I <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wanted to ask: How does a lobbyist become a, a diplomat? That's an interesting one, right? <laughs> Well, basically, what we do, we we lobby a lot as diplomats. We uh, lobby yeah. for the yeah for the positions. Somebody must country. have been listening to you then, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, yeah. yeah. So no, I think it's it, you know, you take from every experience, you take something with you, which you can use yeah. for the next experience. Um, so to young people, I always say, make sure that you do as much as possible and explore where your heart lies and where you get the energy from because do something that you get energy from because that's where you want to put your energy as well. If you do something every day that you hate, it will at a certain point, it, it, it's probably something you're not as good at uh, in. Yeah, because if yeah. you hate something, it's probably something, it, it takes a lot of effort. Yeah. Uh, so if you, you, if you do something in your life that you get energy from, that's something, uh, probably something that you're actually quite good at. Very true, yeah. very true. Yeah. So you were the spokesperson for the Minister of Foreign Affairs, um, and then after that, uh, how long did you do that role for? That I did three years until the, the, the cabinet uh, fell, um, the okay. coalition cabinet, um, and then I was uh, positioned uh, as the uh, chief of the recruitment department of the uh, Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs. Oh, wow. So I, um, um, I organized all the people who came from outside in, whether it's diplomats or uh, temporary staff or, wow. um, uh, yeah, so the whole recruitment. It was a different, uh, completely different um, uh, job. Um, but what I liked about that job is that it is very um, uh, orientated towards human development, but also people, you know, how, yeah. and so I, I also did quite a lot of courses in, you know, how do you, um, how do you keep an open mind? How do you, how do you make sure that your first instincts or your prepositions or your, your uh, prior experience don't cloud how you judge somebody yeah. um, and I think everybody should do this because I think it's so important we sometimes forget that we're all human beings so we That's take right. our previous experiences and and fill in gaps uh, or blank spaces and we sometimes don't um, consider uh, the fact that those blank spaces should be filled in by the other person um, mm -hmm. uh, and that we should 
postpone our opinion uh, once in a while yes. to yes. Uh, uh, and keep uh, and continue to be curious. Um, uh, so I think that's what I learned in in that job. I think it's uh, it was very good for me because I'm very quick. Uh, often very also quick with my opinion and that, that here I really learned to postpone it a little bit or at least um, tell the other sorry I have this in my mind am I correct yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah and then the other one can say yeah you're on the right track or say no 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 that doesn't <laughs> work for me at all <laughs> yeah so yeah. when did and then, you come uh, to Cape Town was it after that that was after that. So, so 2013, okay. I came to Cape Town. Um, uh, by then, had you been I, there before? Yes, I had. Uh, I, I um, twice actually. Um, I the the partner I, ha I had in, in Ghana and Mali, uh, Brussels and uh, Bangkok. Um, okay. Uh, we broke we broke up at a certain point, but that partner. Um, had South African roots, so uh, we visited right. South Africa because his parents were living there. And um, after, when I was the spokesperson of uh, the minister, um, we also visited um, uh, South Africa and Cape right. Town uh, for so, to to look at some certain pro projects. Um, okay. So um, I so I've been there, I was there twice. So I was very pleased that I got uh, yes. that position. Yes. Um, uh, and it didn't fail to excite me and to uh, um, uh, to constantly uh, uh, also make me grow because I think uh, South Africa actually is the position that made me um, look at myself the most and where yeah. I come from and my heritage uh, in relation to others. Uh, so uh, it it made me see things quite differently, and I'm very happy that I. Uh, that I had that experience because I think in the world we live in today um, we tend to forget that we all take a history with us but that history um, uh, can be a history that I admire because I am Dutch but that has yes. inflicted a lot of pain and uh, misery to others because they are South African um, yes. um, and uh, I, I had very open discussions with young people in South Africa uh, that were very um, uh, not vocal, but also eloquent in stating um, how certain things that I thought were nice or were good for me uh, had um, um, impacted their life yeah. and their history and their families yeah. and how they live today. Uh, even the, the, when you think of this, it happened so so long ago, are we still? How, why are we di still discussing this? Uh, yeah. So that was the history history uh, part, but also how you look at things and how your vision is blurred, and that we sometimes um, I think because we have our senses um, and it's good, uh, but those senses are um, are not objective not objective at all um, yeah. and we need to make sure that we continuously uh, tell ourselves that we might be wrong yeah. so that you keep an open mind um, uh, because and I think the movement that we've seen the past year with Black Lives Matter um, yeah. is exactly something that that I learned in South Africa that our institutions are way of looking at things everything is blurred um, yeah. and uh, we do um, I think we're all a little bit racist and I, th yeah. I think if if we know it from ourselves at least we can we can we can ensure um, that we pose ourselves the, the question do I now um, have this opinion because I I, I really objectively think it is this way or because I'm influenced by how I was brought up, where I came from, what I've read, what I've seen on television. Um, because all those, all those images blur our vision uh, quite yes. a bit. Um, yes. uh, so I think uh, South Africa in many ways is, is 
has has had a development if you look at um, black lives matter uh, uh, in the united states but before that you had uh, roads must fall in in south africa yeah. um uh, and i think in many ways you were a, a step ahead of uh, the united states um yeah. with uh, addressing these issues um and and you know, um, posing the uncomfortable questions and um, uh, letting people see the, um, you know, inconvenient truths about how we judge people and how we put people in certain boxes uh, yeah. where they actually don't belong and where they don't want to belong uh, and how we can compensate that do by being open and, and having the conversation, the, the very sometimes uncomfortable uh, conversation. Yeah. So you were Consul General in Cape Town, Sebastian said that you did leave a good legacy behind, co-creator still so. going, so well done on that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but now as your, as your role as the ambassador in Lithuania, may I ask where on earth is Lithuania? Because I had yeah, never I... heard of it before I saw you, you were there. I was like, where, where is this? <laughs> yeah. I also had to look it up. Or, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, oh, I, wow. I had, yeah, no, I had the feeling a little bit that after, because I spent five years in, in Cape Town, which is one no. year longer than, uh, than a normal uh, uh, mandate is. Um, so I was very lucky that I could uh, prolong my, my stay in, 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 in South Africa. So I, have, I had a little bit of feeling, now, Bonnie, now you're going to do the real hard job. You're going to <laughs> Lithuania. <laughs> yeah. So Lithuania <laughs> is, um, is in, in the northern part of Europe, and north of uh, Poland. So it is connected to Poland uh, on one side, uh, connected to Belarus uh, on the other side, and it has a small connection also with uh, Russia. Uh, so it's all the way up there, um, yeah. cold in winter, dark in winter, um, wow. uh, and, and beautiful summers and autumns. Um, uh, and it was for me an, a, a whole new uh, area. It's uh, Lithuania as part of the EU. So I'm uh, very focused uh, uh, on European integration issues uh, 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 and reports uh, monthly uh, uh, to, the, to the Netherlands on EU issues. Um, but we are also here in a very, um, uh, in a very uh, I would not say unstable, uh, maybe unstable political environment, geopolitical environment with, with Russia mm -hmm. on the one side and Belarus. Of course, you've no. seen what happened in Belarus over the past two months. Um, and I think these three Baltic states, Estonia all the way up in the north, uh, Latvia and uh, Lithuania, they um, uh, joined the EU uh, uh, later in uh, 2013, um, 2009, I'm not quite sure, yeah. but they got their, uh, they regained their independence in uh, 1991. Um, uh, and that was a time that they uh, became, regained their independence from the Soviet Union. Um, so they, uh, most people who are here, uh, have a first-hand experience how it is to live under the Soviet regime. And yeah. of course, they are very scared about uh, Russian influence, uh, yeah. Russian pressure, um, um, and uh, they hope that the EU and NATO can protect them from, uh, uh, from that aggression. Um, uh, and we are uh, doing that. Uh, we have... Uh, the biggest foreign military operation in the world of the Netherlands is in Lithuania. So we are part here of a NATO uh, mission. It's called the EFP, Enhanced Forward Presence. And it's based here to, uh, to show uh, Russia that um, um, Lithuania is part of the EU, part of NATO, and that any aggression against Lithuania would also mean aggression against NATO. Um, and this uh, military, uh, NATO military uh, mission um, has been here since uh, 2017 and was a reaction on the aggression against the Ukraine. Um, and now with Belarus, of course, you can imagine that um, yeah. it, it opens uh, certain wounds. Uh, it also 
Lithuania is very vocal and very uh, um, and hopes that 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 Belarus will will uh, go a similar path as they've done, a path of um, yeah. reform, openness, democracy, uh, human rights. Um, whether that will be the case is, uh, is I think, still um, uh, we have to wait uh, and see. Um, uh, but uh, Lithuania has opened up their uh, country for uh, refugees, uh, political asylum refugees, and um, amongst many other people, the opposition leader, Svetlana Tikhonovskaya, yeah. is based yeah. here in, uh, in Lithuania. So that makes my job also quite interesting because, of course, yeah. I speak to her and I speak to... Um, um, uh, to, to the Netherlands about the uh, uh, you know what's happening on this side. It, yeah. it, Minsk is only 30 kilometers, no, 50, no, 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 no. The, the, the border of uh, uh, Belarus is only 30 kilometers away and Minsk, the oh. capital of Belarus, is uh, I think uh, a three hour drive away. So it sure. is it is very close. Yeah. 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 No, that wow, <clears throat> amazing, Bonnie. That's just uh, wow. The time has gone so quickly, and I've enjoyed our conversation. We have to do it again sometime soon. So, Is thank it you already... for that amazing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the time was quick. Eh? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, well let thank me you then, for your time. Uh, yeah. at the end of this, uh, let me just. Uh, I would say like to say hi to everybody in uh, in South Africa. Um, uh, I'm still missing South Africa. I've been back three times because of COVID-19. I cannot travel there this uh, Christmas, but I hope to come back soon. Um, uh, I have many friends. We're still in contact with many people. And uh, thank you for allowing me to grow in your country. And hopefully it made me a better ambassador. I love that. I love that. Next time you hear, we'll, we'll have some coffee together. I look forward to it. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you for thinking of me. No, no, absolute pleasure. Thank you for the legacy that you've left behind here in South Africa. Well done. And I hope that you will create a new legacy there in Lithuania for the Netherlands. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you, Bonnie. God bless. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.